So, man, we're almost to level 100, and I've been playing Sever for, I don't know, 10 or 12 levels. And this is just an absolutely amazing build. We are super, super fast. We have almost infinite bone storms, and we're destroying everything with the best little skeleton that goes out and slashes with a scythe that I've ever seen. This build is so, so strong and so powerful and just demolishes 55 plus nightmare dungeons in Diablo 4. So in this video, I'm gonna go over everything that you need for the build, the skills, the gear, and the Paragon and show you how to play it. Let's get right into it. So starting off, we're gonna go Reap all the way into Acolyte's Reap because we're gonna have a uh, corpse that's gonna uh, form when you hit this. This isn't gonna be the strategy of how you set up the build, but it is a very, very strong starting build and it also does a lot of shadow damage. So now we're going to come down into our core skills and we're taking one point into unliving energy as well as three points into imperfectly balanced. Okay, this is going to give us more damage on our core skill, which is sever. This is going to be doing the majority of our damage. Uh, so it's going to cost more, but it's going to deal a lot more damage. Next, we're going to have huge flesh. Lucky hit chances allow us to create corpse, which is good for our corpse tendril, which is a huge, huge mode in this game. After that, we're maxing out Sever in this build. This is our main damage dealer into Paranormal Sever for that third cast, giving enemies vulnerability for two seconds. Now, because Necromancers as well as like Sorcerers don't have a way to have multiple enemies vulnerable all the time, or at least they only have like one or two skills that can do it because the Exploit Glyph does not work to make all enemies vulnerable like it does on Barbarian or Druid. This is the best way that we have to get that extra damage. If you were doing Sever with minions, I would do Supernatural, but Paranormal is just the better play here. Then we're gonna come down to our Corpse and Max skills. We're taking Blood Mist, which is gonna be one of our main movement skills in this build, and we're doing Ghastly to get a Corpse behind to help trigger all of our Corpse skills. We're taking Corpse Explosion into Blighted Corpse Explosion for more darkness uh, and more darkness damage over six seconds. We're maxing out Grim Harvest as well as Fueled by Death for more damage when we consume a corpse and more essence regeneration when we consume a corpse, which is why our essence at 140 is just always full. Now, next, we're going to come down to more curse skills. We're taking three points into Death's Embrace. This is a melee build. You know, contrary to what people believe, like you can send this out as a mid range, right? You can send your sever out, but this is a close range build. We're going to be moving so fast. We want to do all our damage in the close range when we pull everybody in with corpse tendrils. So we're going to have Death's Embrace max that out for more damage. We're taking Decrepify here into a uh, Aberrant Decrepify for on that lucky hit, the chance to reduce our cooldowns. This is mainly to make sure we keep a infinite uptime on Bone Storm as much as possible you can see that it's not actually on our skill bore the reason for this is because we have the skill but we have our um malignant heart which is automatically or excuse me this one our brutal heart which is going to have enemies curse near us when there's an enemy next to us so that's how we get the curse because this is a close range build we're always going to be able to get our cooldowns uh, after that, we're going to come down to our Corpse and Max Skills again. We're taking Corpse Tendrils into Play Corpse Tendrils for even more vulnerability. Then we're maxing out Reaper's Pursuit for move speed. We're maxing out Gloom for even more damage. We're maxing out Terror for more damage. And we're taking one point into Crippling Darkness for a chance to stun them. This is very important. My team just finished the dungeon. We got Bloodless Scream again. That's really good. I like that. It's pretty awesome. Now we're going to come down to our ultimate skills. We're going to do a uh, bone storm into supreme bone storm for more crit damage. We're maxing out standalone since this is a non minion build. And we're also doing memento mori to increase our sacrificial bonuses even more. Now you can see the build is, is really, really fun here. We're just going to absolutely dominate and kill everything. Move, super move speed. You guys have already seen it in a few clips. But I'm going to break down how the rotation actually works. I'm going to skip on actually leveling up the glyph for this run just to continue the video here. Now, our key passive is going to be Shadow Blight. So, Shadow Damage infects enemies with Shadow Blight over two seconds. You and our minions deal ten times this bonus. Every tenth time our shadow ban our, our an enemy receives Shadow Damage from us, they take even more damage, which is absolutely awesome. So, let me transfer this. Now, with this build, we're going to be very, very fast. There's a couple ways to play it. You can see here on the graph that we have Littlest Wall, which is really, really fun. And this is what procs us to have as many Bone Storms as possible. So in the gear pieces here, we have one option that you can just swap back and forth to do this build. It is really up to you. Now, I will say I will put in, in the notes in 
the uh, written guide on Mobilitics that we will have a glove um, gear piece to swap out. But right now this build works very, very well with what we have. So we're in our helm, we're taking explosive mist. This is just gonna allow us to explode corpses and get our cooldown so we can try to get blood mist up as uh, much as possible. Next, we're taking disobedience for more armor in our chest piece. We're doing gauntlets of grasping veins on corpse tendrils. This gives us crit chance and more damage. In our um, pants, we're taking shielding storm. Each time that bone storm damages an enemy, we get a barrier. This is gonna help keep us alive because we're a melee build, okay? And with Littlest Wall, we spawn, we spawn even more Bone Storms. And when we have almost 100% upkeep or uptime on Bone Storm, this barrier is always going to be active. In our boots, you have a couple options in our boots. I'm doing Ghost Walker while we're unstoppable and for four seconds after we get more move speed. However, you could do Wind Striker for when you crit, you get more move speed. Totally up to you. They both work interchangeably. They both work very well for this build. In our main hand, we're not doing a two hand, surprisingly. We need it for an extra power, uh, but we are doing ultimate shadow here. Bone Storm becomes shadow damage and gains an additional effect of shadow damage over two seconds, which is dot damage. Then we're taking Blighted in our amulet. We deal even more increased damage after Shadow Blight key passive damages 10 times. And we have Decay in our first ring. Each time Shadow Blight key passive deals damage, it increases the damage of it uh, the next time within 10 seconds. We got a max roll on this. This is really good. And our last one, we're doing Umbral to help keep our resources up as much as possible. However, you could swap this out for a, any number of things. However, I find Umbral works the best currently. In our offhand, again, we have Lilith's Wall. On a lucky hit, you have a, while we have an active Bone Storm, an unaffected enemy has a 25 or 20% chance to spawn an additional one. And then it's increased by each of your sack bonuses. So we actually get a lot, a lot of Bone Storms going all the time with this now the option that i was running before i got littlest wall is going to be blood soaked what this does is, is allow blood mist to leave a trail of shadow damage which is just dot damage it's very small amount but the most important part of this is that our speed no longer is reduced so when we have this and we're moving we move really really fast and then when we get uh, we start damaging enemies and we get our passive to proc when we deal shadow damage. It increases our move speed even more. We become very, very fast in this build. Okay. the in having this on almost infinite reset just makes us insanely fast. If I had some enemies here, I would show you, but you guys saw it in the thing. So we, and like, we move just insanely fast with this build. And then damaging all these enemies, we're going to get an infinite reset of this, which makes it really, really fun. Um, now I'm going to go over the rotation real quick and just kind of break down how the build actually plays out. So this is what you're going to want to do. You're going to want to activate bone storm first. We need this active as much as possible. Okay. We need this up all the time. The main reason for this is because we're going to be doing a lot of shadow damage with this. We get our damage reduction. So you're going to come in bone storm right and now you can just sever and destroy the enemies it makes it really 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 easy to do so you pop bone storm first you can blood mist to create a corpse or you can reap you can do either one and then because of our malignant hearts we have the wrathful one where we cycle through our next one is the vicious heart where walking near corpse automatically activates so this is why we need to get a corpse as fast as possible so it automatically procs corp tendrils after corpse tendrils then we get corpse explosion to go off automatically for more shadow damage and then our last one is the brutal heart which gives us our curse which is why we want to be so close okay now the rotation is going to go bone storm reap or blood mist group all the enemies up corpse tendrils will auto proc and then we're going to be able to sever them to pieces that is the rotation of the build you're going to have uptime on both of these. You can use Blood Mist as often as you would like. Um, and then try to keep Bone Storm up as much as possible. You will get the Lucky Hit reset when you deal Shadow Damage. Uh, our Book of the Dead. We're sacrificing Reapers for more Shadow Damage. Our Mages, we are sacrificing Cold Ones for more Vulnerable Damage. And then in our Golems, we're sacrificing Iron for more Crit Damage. Okay, These are very, very solid. Makes the build play very, very smoothly. Now, the last bit of this build, guys, we're going to go in. I'm going to, we're going to check out the Paragon board. I did make some changes, but we're going to go over it briefly. So starting out, you're going to go up the right-hand side, grab Prime. Then you're going to be getting Territorial here. We're a close-range build. 
We're going to be doing everything up close. The damage reduction is really good. And more damage close to enemies you can't go uh, wrong with. Then we got preservation for more armor and intelligence with corresponding nodes. Knowledge, same thing. More damage and intelligence with corresponding nodes. In our second board, we're taking Flesh Eater, the first of many legendary nodes that we're taking. Consuming five courses gives us 40% times increased damage. We're going to be consuming a lot of corpses and creating a lot of them, so this should always be active. We're going to come up the left side and grab Stifle for more damage and crit damage with corresponding nodes. Then we're going to come up and grab Targeted for more damage against Elites and Intelligence. Corresponding nodes. Uh, this, we're going to... I, we don't actually necessarily need this for the Resistance, but we just need it for the Intelligence for our Glyph, which is going to be Essence for more crit strike damage and more crit damage or crit strikes deal more damage against healthy enemies. Then we're going to trickle over here to the right for color for more damage against um, more attack speed, excuse me. And then on Lucky Hat, we had a chance to execute non elites and more attack speed here. You could take the additional chance. We actually don't need this. We just want the attack speed. In board three, we are going to be taking Wither. Uh, shadow damage over time effects have a chance to deal more damage. This chance is increased for each, um, is increased by 4% for each 40 willpower we have. This is absolutely insane for this build. Uh, we're going to come up and we're going to be taking uh, Maldiction for more shadow damage and intelligence and damage against crowd control enemies. Our Glyph is going to be control for more crowd control. We are always slowing and stunning enemies, so this is always going to be proccing and be active. We're going to be taking Gnawing Darkness for more shadow damage and damage against elites. Corresponding nodes. We're taking Lingering Shadows. Same thing. More shadow damage. Shadow damage over time. Corresponding nodes. Then we're taking Dragging Shadows. Damage reduction and shadow resistance, but more importantly, shadow damage or uh, damage reduction. In our fourth board or our third board, excuse me, we're taking Scent of Death. Uh, this is for damage reduction, and when Nor Corpses are around, we deal more damage. Then we're going to grab Ruin for more damage and crit strike damage. Then we're going to grab uh, Death Marked. We don't have the 450 willpower yet, but the additional damage to injury, uh, injured enemies is awesome in Tell Intelligence. We're going to be doing Darkness for more damage against Shadow or more Shadow damage. And then we deal increased damage um, over time, which is awesome. Then we're going to be grabbing um, Preservation for more Armor and Intelligence. We're taking Corrective for more Crit Strike damage. In our last and final board, we're taking Bloodbath. We're not actually taking the, the node, but we have Bloodbath here. Just to get a very quick look at a Glyph, which is going to be Exploit for more damage against vulnerable enemies. Uh, then we're taking Harden for more damage while fortified, and but mainly just for the intelligence. So that is the board, guys. This is Shadow Sever, or a very, very strong Shadow build for the Necromancer. And I've been having the most fun with this besides Bone Spear. So comment down below, guys. Tell me what you guys think about Sever versus Shadow Blight, or vice versa, or just in general. Uh, make sure to comment below. Let me know. Like the video, subscribe if you guys are new, and as always, stay gaming, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.